All right, let's get started. Dave Banta, award-winning recording engineer, producer, and software instructor, is here to begin a, a new segment. Actually, it's the second in uh, this is the new segment that we're do- doing uh, called Dave Banta's Home Recording Studio Tips and Advice. And if you have a question for Dave, you can call him at 818-985-5735. Welcome, Mr. Banta. What have you got? Actually, I know what you have for us today. Yep. And I am very happy that you're going to be talking about this aspect of mixing, and that is panning, and uh, and I'll get into telling you why. Yeah, um, last time I was on the show two weeks ago, Sam asked a question about uh, panning in a mix, and right. I didn't really have much time to respond. So I did some thinking about it, and I came up with the suggestion and two tips that will help you with your panning in your mixes. Um, the first suggestion that I have is that if you learned recording on a computer, I I recommend that you learn how to use a real mixing board, even if it's a small one or a small home recording board, because most of my background is on big mixing boards and tape machines and little mixing boards, and it makes you think in a different way than you do if you learned uh, recording on a computer. And one of my tips actually exemplifies that. And the first tip is... And, and let, let okay. me just... I'm going to jump in every okay, now and then. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, forgive my interruption. But the fact of the matter is, Dave, is that your best recording engineers in the business, without exception from L.A. to New York to London, are all engineers who learned, quote-unquote, old school, trained on mixing boards from... You know, the old scotch four track. Uh, yeah. They learned that method and then they took it into Pro Tools and into the computer. And, and the reason that works is because everything that we have in our recording software is a simulation of right. something that existed before computers. Right. Um, EQs, reverbs, uh, mixing boards, um, mm. pretty much everything that you see in your software. Compressors, limiters, yeah, all, all of that. that. Gates yeah. are simulations of real gear, and I recommend that you learn or at least become familiar with the real gear mm-hmm. so that when you use a software version, you, you think from a different perspective. Right. And And the one tip I wanted to say about that was, if, if I was in a big studio or in any studio on a recording mixing board and someone was to sit down and play their favorite stereo piano like a Korg or a Roland, I would have to record it to two tracks on the tape machine and play it back through two channels on the mixing board. Because it's stereo. Because it's stereo. Right. But in, in recording software these days, we have stereo tracks. Right. And I think that actually is a hindrance to a lot of people because they don't realize that you shouldn't pan all of your stereo tracks hard left and hard right, right. because they'll all be in the same area. Mm-hmm. Now, if I was on a mixing board, I'd see my left side and my right side on different channels. Maybe on a stereo piano, I might pan it 10 and 2, and mm-hmm. on a string, I might pan it hard left and right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have some suggestions when you're working on software on how to do that. Mm-hmm. Now, you wouldn't, you wouldn't um, and, 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 you know, as a producer, I don't ever uh, hard left and right piano, uh, mainly because I discovered that there are other keyboards that I'm usually putting on unless it's just a vocal and a piano. Mm-hmm. And even then, once a guitar starts to come in, like in the middle of the song, yeah, I start to add a guitar maybe or two guitars or bass, mm-hmm. um, I will pan the piano to three and the nine o'clock positions. Get it out of that hard left and right yeah. position. Yeah. Is that a good thing? Yeah, well, you know, Anything other than than everything in the mix pan the same way. Right. And if I were to sit down at my Roland keyboard and play a stereo piano and record it on a stereo track and then a stereo string on a stereo track, you have to go in there and not pan them all hard. You can't just mm-hmm. leave all your stereo tracks hard pan left and right. Right. Now, you could have you could have keyboard, piano, acoustic piano left and tons, right. Tons, tons. Strings. Yeah. Uh, you could have uh, acoustical strings left and right. Absolutely. You could have, instead of individual horns, you might have uh, a preset that has uh, a horn section, trumpets and trombones exactly, yeah. left and right, woodwinds, saxophones, uh, alto, tenor, and uh, barry sax, pan left and right. Mm-hmm. You've got all these sections, 
uh, in, including um, percussion, uh -huh. pan left and right. So what are you going to do, pan everything? No, you can't. You right. can't. But what I'm saying is on computer, people got so adapted to stereo tracks that they don't think about going into those stereo tracks and panning them differently. Right. You know, And there's two ways that I can suggest that you can do that. I, I can't speak for logic or sonar, but in Cubase, when you open the mixing board, if you right click on the stereo panner in Cubase, it gives you several advanced options. You can uh, select dual panner, which lets you pan the left and right side independently. So that's one way that you can do it is look in your recording software and see if it does the same thing that Cubase does. You can choose mm. some advanced panning options, which lets you pan the left and right side independently. Okay, so it'll take something that's on that you can uh, ostensibly uh, ostensibly put on one fader. Yeah, and, exactly. And it'll open up another fader for that particular. It'll give you two separate ah, faders for the left and right I side. I just learned you something use today. I know I use can be. A, I've never done it that way. Everyone I've ever showed that to didn't yeah. know. I did not I know that. To them. Yeah. Learn something today. It gives you a different display, and instead of just like one panner, it's got the two, the left and right side. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know about other other programs, but the other suggestion that I have is when you're working on a mixing board and you have a stereo piano pan left and right, it's really common for professional engineers to EQ the sides differently mm -hmm. because anytime you change one side and it sounds uh, more different than the other side, uh, it makes it more stereo. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at a, a stereo piano on two mono channels on your board, you think about, hey, maybe I can EQ the left and the right side differently or mm -hmm. add a different effect on one side. So one of the things people can do is when they sit down to record their favorite Korg or Roland, um, instead of recording it to one stereo track, they can record it to two separate mono tracks. Mm -hmm. And they, just, they can pan mm -hmm. one left and right and have independent control over, over both of those sides. Speaking Speaking of which, and I know the answer to this, but I want okay. you to, I'm sure there are a lot of people who run into, you know, you, you find out about mixing and engineering and a lot of it by trial and error if you don't have someone sitting around you to show you the ropes. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I had others, some really great engineers and producers teach me the ropes. Um, one of the things I learned very, very early on when I was um, living and working in Chicago there was a guy, I can't remember his last name, but his first name was Malcolm. He worked at a studio called 8-Track Studio on, I think it was Erie or Huron Street in Chicago, down in the in mid-Chicago anyway. Um, and we were, you know, he did uh, a lot, a lot of, there's a lot of commercials that come out of there, and I, you know, I did some anyway. And I thought that if you... <laughs> <laughs> if you would take a a, a, a mono piano, for example, yeah. example, and bounce it to another track, like let's say you had the mono, mono piano on track five, and you bounce it, skip track six, bounce it to seven. This shows you how stupid I was, and <laughs> and then pan them left and right. It would be stereo. And the first try, time I tried it, he uh, he goes, uh, "Well, go ahead and try." It. He was one of those. Yeah, go ahead and try it rookie yeah. <laughs> and I found out that no it doesn't because of what why is that well actually uh, I just read a, a brilliant book about about all this and what the book says is that there's really no such thing as mono in our brain or in our head uh -huh. but when our brain hears the left and right side similarly yeah. it's actually called imaging it uh -huh. creates an image inside your head and tries to place where it is I see so if you were to take the same this is cool this is good uh -huh. back in the day when, when I was working on 24 track reel to reel and we only had 24 tracks at That's the beginning it. of a session we had to plan our mix out and yeah. sometimes the piano ended up on one track yes so what we would do is we would split it to two channels on the mixing board right. we pan one left and one right yeah send the bus is that well what you no out of the tape machine one uh -huh. channel on the tape machine uh -huh. Uh, into two channels on the board. Actually, tape machine is track. Uh, uh -huh. Off of one track on the tape machine into two channels on the board. Okay. And you're right. If I were to pan them left and right, it would still be in mono. Right. Because it's that's what mono is. is. Right. It's the same thing on the right and the same thing on the exactly. left. Exactly. Anytime you change the right side from the left side, it becomes stereo and even more stereo. So what we used to do is on one channel, we turn up the highs on the piano so you'd hear more of the right side of the piano. Mm. And on the left channel, we turn up the low so you mm. get more of the left hand. Mm. 
So we would take, we'd have to record the piano on one track, and we'd split it into two channels mm -hmm. on the mixing board. And anytime you alter the right side from the left side, mm -hmm. it becomes stereo. Mm -hmm. and the